The big problem with proposed legislation such as SOPA and PIPA and whatever our minister here in Ireland, Sean Sherlock, is proposing, the bill that Godless Manitoban just informed me of, C11 in Canada, all these types of legislation, the problem with all these types of legislation is that they are based on a flawed concept. The concept that a recording of a performance of a particular work should be protected by copyright. The sad thing is that first of all this legislation is impotent from the outset because not only are there already mechanisms in place by which people right now can circumvent any attempts to block out sources of such material but you can rest assured that if such legislation is actually pushed through that this will lead to even an even bigger push to develop such legislation or to develop such technology and to bring it into the mainstream at the moment in order to avail of the functionality of a dark net for example you need to be a bit technically minded you need to be willing to try rogue software from sources that have not been verified on your computer and stuff like that and a lot of people especially the general public will consider that to be a rather risky thing to do and would be scared to do so but if this sort of legislation starts taking hold, then I can see a time coming where a main browser, and that's why I suggested this in a couple of videos ago, a main browser such as Firefox or Opera or Internet Explorer or Chrome, will start making this part of their standard toolset to be able to use torrent-based technology to access the Internet through Tor and to access.onion domain names. That time will come and the legislation will once again be left behind. But what's even sadder is that this type of legislation shows the clear myopic attitude towards copyright that is not only embraced by the record labels and the multi-billion industry that are trying to protect but also by those who are basically in the pockets of these organizations and who are unwilling to pull their heads out of the back passages of giant corporations such as EMI and to look around and smell the coffee and see how this can actually be addressed in a creative manner. For example, when it comes to the recorded works of particular artists, there are already solutions that are currently put in place that address the problem. For example, here in Ireland, one of our ISPs, Aircom, provides a service as part of the ISP package. So, think about this. You, are, you need to subscribe to a broadband provider if you want access to the internet. There is a certain amount of money involved in accessing, as accessing the internet. You need a subscription to an ISP. Aircom have built into this subscription a, an access to this thing that they call the Music Hub. Now, because you're already paying for the service, as far as you're as a consumer concerned, are concerned, this is a free service. You can freely access a large repertoire of music through the internet and play it whenever you like. It will not cost you an extra penny. So you, as a consumer, feel that you have the freedom to play what you want and to find new music music and to access it that way. On the other hand, of course, Aircom has entered into an agreement with a number of music record companies and so on and they are reaping the benefit of that. There is, of course, an exchange of money involved. That's one creative solution. There are other solutions such as Netflix, for example, that achieve a similar thing. Another thing is that record companies and recording artists should start looking at their recordings in a completely different light. At the moment 
they see the recording itself as something that needs to be protected and that the dissemination of which needs to be controlled. And it would be much more beneficial if they would start looking at this in a completely different light, if they would start looking at a recording of one of their works as an advertisement rather than a piece of work that needs to be protected in its own right. See it as an advertisement and then sell to the public not the recording but sell to the, to the public the experience of seeing a live performance of the artist for example or to see the or to experience the the uh, playing of an artist's output in a setting such as a disco for example or a rave or whatever else you want to go to to listen to music dance to it experience the buzz to interact with other people who also love this music by this particular artist and artists like him or her that's the sort of experience that could be sold. Sell the performances, sell the renditions of the material, sell the experience of feeling this, experiencing this in a large setting with a group of like-minded people. Those sort of experiences can be organized and sold on and used as a revenue stream that is one of the things that could very much alleviate the problem for the artists and for the record companies, for the movie producers. Look at, for example, you know, talking about a movie, look at the Rocky Horror Picture Show and how this has led to an interactive experience where people go to screenings of this movie but they go dressed up they go dressed up as one of the characters in the movie they act out the the script for that particular character when the character comes into play they act out the whole movie in front of the screen while the movie plays in the background and so on and so forth and it's an experience to enjoy and of course you pay an entry fee when you enter the cinema where it's played of course and that entrance fee can go towards paying for copyright. You see, those are the sort of creative solutions that are not hinged on the industry trying to control who gets to listen or see or um, consume an artist's output and at what time. This is a interactive thing that allows us to enjoy an artist and the artist to enjoy the benefits of their popularity without draconian measures that are ill-conceived and that might lead to censorship when they are abused for purposes for which they were never intended in the first place. That is the problem with this legislation. These people come up with this legislation by myopically focusing on one thing and that is how to stamp out this copyright abuse. That is the problem they're trying to solve. And by doing so they completely ignore any other problems that might be introduced by the legislation that they are proposing. The other problems as Sean Sherlock himself has been has shown himself to be very very fond of doing. The other problems are swiped away are claimed to be non-existent or unimportant. They are not. What is at stake here is our freedom of expression, ultimately. When legislation against copyright theft is enacted that could be abused by unscrupulous, unscrupulous people to censor somebody whose output they don't agree with or that they don't want others to experience, then your legislation creates more problems than it solves. It creates bigger problems than the problems that it addresses. And such legislation cannot be tolerated. 
That is why there was such an outcry over Sopa and Pippa in the States. That is why there was such an outcry over Sean Sherlock's ill-conceived ideas here in Ireland. And that is why I hope there will be an equal outcry against C11 in Canada, ACTA in Europe and wherever else, and any other such abortions of legislation that people might come up with in the near future. We have something important to protect here, folks. We have to protect freedom of expression. And even if that must come at the cost of copyright, then that will be a sacrifice worth making. I know EMI will not agree with that. Sony will not agree with that. But if the only proposals that they can come up with are proposals that curtail our freedom of expression, then their right to gain revenue of the material that they create has to suffer instead. Our freedom of expression is more important than their right to have their copyright protected. And that should be the baseline on which any decision is made. Period. No negotiation. No argument.